Okay, as promised, uh, I'm going to begin the process of reviewing this 2021 Husqvarna TE 250i. Um, this is a 70 plus hour uh, review. So this is a bike I've ridden quite a bit. Um, all those hours have almost exclusively been racing uh, local enduro and hair scrambles. Uh, in ECA in District 6 uh, AMA So um, You know, that's some everything from sand to rocky technical coal dust uh, we race in a lot of Coal mines abandoned coal mines um, You can see here, you know she's got her fair share of dings and dents and what have you um, stock expansion chamber has held up surprisingly well um, I have blown out quite a few dents um, and even a kink right there and right there blown those kinks out with the uh, Compressed air tool. Um, the guy from uh, Tokyo Off Road has a video on it. It's an air tool. Hook it up to the expansion chamber. Um, allows you to pressurize it. Put an acetylene torch on it, um, and pops the dents right out. Um, it really, really works. Save yourself a lot of money. I'd be on about my fifth pipe right now without it. So, um, I do want to make a quick comment on these stock radiator braces. They're incredible. Uh, you can see right here on this side, I actually split the plastic. Split the plastic. Um, it dented the radiator in a little bit, but uh, it kept everything intact. And uh, I still don't leak fluid. Haven't had a problem. And that happened probably 40 hours ago. So uh, they can take a hit. They can take a hit. Uh, and that's a stock piece. So another thing I want to comment on, you know, a lot of people say, uh, you know, these uh, Explore forks, they're too soft, too soft for racing. Um, well, I'm 170 pounds without gear, and um, I can tell you they're on the softer side for sure. But um, as I was playing around with settings and, and reading up on some different things, um, I stumbled across somebody had made a post about the um, being able to add fork oil to uh, the forks directly through the bleeder cap on the top. And it's kind of hard to see, but the bleeder cap is right there at the front of the fork. And if you remove them and put about an extra 10 mLs of fluid, I went out and got a little uh, milliliter syringe and was able to um, was able to add 10 mLs just by taking out the the two bleeder caps, and I'll tell you, it really stiffened them up. You know, so you don't get that real hard dive under extreme braking or anything like that. Uh, as extreme braking as you can do. Uh, with these Magura brakes, and that's going to bring me to my one of the very few negatives about this bike. Um, I also own a KTM uh, 2021 KTM uh, 125XC, and that bike has the Brembo brakes on it. Um, the Brembo brakes are light years ahead of these Magura brakes, in my opinion. Um, I can tolerate the rear brake, 
I can tolerate the progressiveness of the rear brake um, because I don't use it a ton. Um, but the stopping power on the front brake does not even compare. Nowhere close to the Brembo's. And to be honest with you, uh, I think Husqvarna has switched now. The 22 and 23, they're all Brembo now. But um, I wouldn't buy another bike without the Brembo brakes. If I end up keeping this bike for another season, I might actually incur the cost to just upgrade them uh, because they're that bad. Front brakes, front brakes only are that bad that I wouldn't be able to live with it. Um, seat concept seat. Um, I do fit the, um, I do fit into this bike's target demographic. So I am over 40. Again, about 170 pounds, but um, my body and my bones are getting old, so I like to make it as comfy as possible. Yeah, I got the flex bars, you know, I got the seat concepts, comfy seat, which I try to keep my butt off of, to be honest with you, you know, stay in good riding shape, in good riding form, standing. But, you know, there are those times where your butt's got to hit the seat, and it's nice when it does. Uh, to hit that wide comfy seat. Um, stock chain and front sprocket still um, 70 hours of abuse and I mean she's holding up so you know good quality components there. I actually changed the uh, rear sprocket. I swapped the um, I swapped this with the stock 51 that came on the 125 XC um, just because I wanted it a little bit lower because most of my riding is in third and fourth gear um, just to give me that little bit of extra grunt and I think for 22 they actually went to a 51 or a 52 stock on these bikes. I mentioned in a previous video um, one of the you know, another criticism I have of this bike and is the transmission. First and second gear are extremely low, extremely low, like tractor low. Um, they're just, you know, it's for mountain goat, mountain goat riding, I call it. I mean, I'm almost, you know, we have some tight woods uh, up here in the Northeast and um, rarely, if ever, am I finding myself in um, first or second gear. It just almost never happens unless it's muddy, uh, you know, and we're on slippery rocks and I'm really, you know, just trying to keep it on two wheels in a, in a tough technical section. Um, got some aftermarket pegs, aftermarket brake pedal service frame guards um, they're holding up pretty well kind of wore through the stock ones these are holding up pretty well I will say uh, you definitely get a good bite on these with your boot um, this whatever this material here is so I find that the boots sliding back a lot less like see I mean my graphics completely worn away there from the boot rub um, yeah, this is the TPI. Um, a lot of people I know uh, in the off-road world love TPI. Some two-stroke purists say, you know, it kind of took something away from two-strokes. I'm of the opinion that it, that it added more than it took away. Um, basically, you know, it made the power more linear. It made the power more linear. Uh, whatever's going on in there, uh, it works. Um, I, I think it gives you some of the advantages of the four-stroke and still keeps the advantages of the two-stroke. Um, I like the more linear power of the TPI. I think uh, you literally have to try to stall this bike 
um, you have to try. I mean, in many, many hours of racing, 70 hours of racing on this bike, I think I've stalled this bike twice. Um, you literally have to try. It's, uh, it's that good and it's that easy to keep running. The bike will just idle down to nothing. Um, put it under a load, give it a little clutch, give it a little throttle, and uh, she'll pull out of anything. Um, you know, of course, oil goes in there, straight gas goes in there, and then all the magic happens down below. Um, so, yeah, I've been through a couple different sets of hand guards and grips and things. Um, Scott steering stabilizer. This is a must uh, where we ride, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's kept me out of the hospital many a times. Um, just, just for the you know the high speed stuff, keeps the death wobble down. Um, things catching you off guard. I had originally gone with the undermount. Uh, the bike is is a, is a little lower than the KTM's. I found it very comfortable. It's a very comfortable bike to stand on at my height. I'm about 5'9". Um, very comfortable bike to stand on. I found when I put the undermount uh, for the Scott stabilizer on that the height it gained in the bars, it just threw some geometry off for me and I did not uh, care for it. And so I sold that to a buddy of mine who's much taller than me, and I purchased the uh, over-the-bar mount and um, made the alterations. And that put everything pretty much back down to the stock height and that sort of real sweet uh, geometry and comfort in uh, standing all kind of came back. So um, can't say enough about the Scott's products. They go on every one of the bikes that I own. My kids' bikes, we've even put them on the uh, 85s. You gotta weld the stem to the frame, but it's well worth it. Um, yeah, other than that right now, um, this is again, just a kind of an initial overview, some thoughts. Um, I will say, I will also say and mind you, I don't get money from any of these people. Um, I, nobody gives me a discount or anything. I'm self-sponsored. This is a sport you just bleed money to do. Um, but I tried these um, these Tusk Emax T45 tires. And um, this tire right here, this rear tire, probably has 30, 20, nah, 20 to 25 race hours on it. And this front tire has about 10. Uh, this is the 80121. And the rear tire is the 110 118 tusk uh t45 i have to say i really like a michelin bibs uh michelin bibs and um they are holding up and and i i i would say they're very comparable to the Battlecross X30s, which I love. Bridgestone Battlecross X30s. Um, they're very comparable and they're like almost half the money. So I would definitely recommend giving them a try if you're an intermediate to hard terrain. Great tire and a great tire for the money. Um, one last thing I want to comment on here is I hear a lot of folks talking about uh, you know, you got to tweak these TPIs to get them right. You got to do an idle screw. You got to mess with the power valve. Um, you know, I mean, I'm by no means a, a top level rider. Um, but, you know, 
uh, I'm not the slowest guy in the world either. And I gotta say, I haven't done anything to this bike in that regard. No idle screw mod. I have not touched um, the power valve screw. It is where it came from, from the factory. And I have had zero issues. The bike starts when I hit the button. It idles perfect as soon as it's warm. And I've changed one plug at 40 hours and the thing looked good. Um, so I don't know, that's just my personal experience. I haven't touched a thing and the bike runs perfect all the time, every time. Probably been the most hassle-free two-stroke I've ever owned. Do have the crankcase pressure sensor uh, protector on there. Never touched the fuel air or the air screw. Um, as far as lubricants, I just use what the manual recommends uh, at the recommended intervals. I uh, do that with all my bikes and I don't have a problem. So that's uh, that's about it for this uh, initial overview. Um, any other questions, comments, concerns, um, you know, hit me up in the comments. Uh, I, I'd like to, to talk about it with some other owners and um, see where things uh, see where things go but I'll be continuing to provide updates um, sure there's a lot of little nuanced things that um, kind of overlooking but uh, been wanting to do this video for a while so uh, hope you all enjoy it